Alexis Bloom, uh, you directed uh, Divide and Conquer, the story of Roger Ailes. Uh, now, at what point did you first become interested in, in telling this story about you know, the, the CEO and, and chairman of Fox News? I mean, interested is the, is the question. I was always interested in Roger Ailes. Uh, alive, but he had been um, deposed from Fox News. So, you know, as soon as he was uh, sort of deposed, kicked out, uh, we knew that there was sort of like a chink in the armor and that we could, we could tell the story. But we'd been discussing doing a film about Rupert Murdoch before and doing research in this general area for, for, for a while before. But we started, yeah, he was still alive um, before Trump. Yeah. And, and how did, you know, the, the whole political uh, uh, you know, upheaval of the last couple of years, like, you know, did, did things happen as you were uh, making the film that, that required a lot of uh, uh, improvising and, and, and refocusing? You know, surprisingly not considering how much happened you know the me too movement hadn't hadn't started when we started this film roger was one of the first people to go down uh not literally but to, <laughs> but um yeah so you know it was a different world it was kind of um it was a different world uh politically it was a different world you know um we just couldn't believe how quickly this kind of house of cards fell. And also, unfortunately, the kind of the irony of what Roger had created was that it far outlived him, you know. And when he died, we thought, well, maybe, you know, Fox television will become more liberal or more reasonable or hew more closely to journalistic standards. And none of that happened. But it did, the, the story didn't change. It was kind of a, it was a cautionary tale. It was kind of like a Citizen Kane-like, you know, sprawling kind of, we thought about it kind of in cinematic terms, you know, and kind of the, the how did this man become monstrous? And all of that didn't change, you know, the, the, the things happened in the world around us that validated, you know, our film and made it seem at least, you know, to me that we were on the right path, uh, but the actual filmmaking didn't change that much. I mean, you know, people were more willing to talk to us, I think, once A, he died, and B, kind of sexual harassment stories came out more widely. I think women felt a little more emboldened to talk. Yeah. Over, the, yeah. Over the course of making, uh, you know, did anything surprise you as you were, you know, researching this man and, and, and really yeah. trying to understand him more deeply? Yeah, a lot surprised me. I mean, it surprised me that somebody could be head of a multi-million dollar, like a billion dollar corporation and be so uh, chronically paranoid, you know, uh, like an intern on our project had to have kind of higher mental health status than he had and he was properly paranoid at the end you know he thought obama was going to come and get him using the tsa you know i just I, he was kind of unhinged by the end he wasn't always so but uh that surprised me his kind of propensity to mythologize to kind of big himself up surprised me um didn't surprise me, you know, sexual harassment aspects of that. You know, I had no idea that when you settle a suit for sexual harassment, not only do you always get fired from your job, there's no way you'll keep your job, but you also get clauses in your in your settlement that say you can never apply to that company ever again for a job or any of its affiliates. You know, so if it's a big company like 21st Century Fox, that means you can't apply to you know, an affiliate in Chicago or kind of like, you know, an animation company that might be, you know, owned by the same people. So there's, there's, there was, there was lots that surprised me. And, uh, you know, you, you compared him to, to Citizen Kane in a way is, is, yeah. did you end up feeling any, you know, sympathy for, for him or, you know, did what he create kind of outweigh any sense of, you know, what you could you know, feel for him at all? Yeah, you know, he's human. He's human. That's the that's the troubling thing. So you 
you know, I met so many people who were like, he's a disgusting monster, he's vile, he's, you know, monster kind of came up a lot. And, you know, did I feel sympathy? I did feel sympathy for him. He, you know, Austin Pendleton, who we interview says, um, you know, uh, he, he was characterized by this longing, this yearning look in his eye and a kind of sadness. And I, and I recognize that, you know, I didn't ever like him, you know, but he had a very tough childhood. You know, he had hemophilia. He thought he was going to die. You know, no five-year-old kid needs a kind of mortal disease. No five-year-old kid needs to spend time in a hospital basically being told that they're going to die, you know. So, you know, that, that must have been awful for him. And I think it made him very intimate with kind of fear and it made him kind of act recklessly. So I don't know, you know, you, I grew up in apartheid era South Africa, you know, and you realize that ordinary people are capable of extraordinary acts of evil. You know, the lifeguard who doesn't let a person of color onto the beach, you know, are they evil? No, they're not necessarily, they're, they're, they're weirdly human, you know, and then you think, God, can't you see what you're doing is so vile? So I, I, I grew up in that situation. So. I, you know, I, I recognized his humanity. I just tried to understand it. Yeah. One of the things I noticed, um, <clears throat> sort of like a subtext of the film, is you've got this man who is incredibly, you know, paranoid, and and he has this troubled background. And uh, as you said, you know, he might, you know, person with this these kind of mental uh, 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 issues might have trouble getting a job as an intern, let alone yeah. running a media company. Yeah. But when you put all the the Rupert Murdoch money behind him. One man has the ability to scale up, you know, all of his his thoughts, his delusions, his his you know desires for power, and yeah. literally change the entire world. Uh, you know, what did you think about like how? Yeah, you know, did you think about sort of money in media differently when you were making this? Totally, I, totally, and it's all about the money. It's all about the money. That's all it's about. You know, and had. Roger been losing money, believe me, he would have been out because like there was, there were enough people who didn't like him that, you know, he would have been out. But because he made so much money, Rupert Murdoch was like, don't even, don't look at the books, you know, so they didn't necessarily know the terms of all the settlements that were going on. You know, he got to appoint his own legal counsel, his own head of HR. He had no oversight, you know, and why? Because he made, so he was a money-making machine. It's all about the money. And you know, then, uh, you know, the, the Murdoch boys, you know, so-called liberals, you know, into environmental causes and stuff like that, you know. Um, you know, oh yes, you know, as soon as we heard that, you know, there was all this terrible stuff going on, we got rid of Roger Ailes, you know, bullshit. They were renegotiating Bill O'Reilly's contract at the same time. You know, Bill O'Reilly had been, was going through a $32 million settlement. And they were they were they were renegotiating his contract, so you know it's all about money, and I see that I totally see that you know, and not rocking the boat, you know. Unfortunately, I don't make enough money that I'm never ever going to be put in that position. You know, it's like just not about the money, the level that I'm doing it. You know, so great. Oh, honestly, I you know I, I came away from this film thinking <clears throat> I don't I don't want to have that level of money. I don't want anyone on earth to have that level of money. I've got money with you, yeah. yeah. And, and it's like one person with that access to that many resources is actually destabilizing to global stability. I think. Yeah, sure. Someone like Murdoch, absolutely, yeah. And you know, you'll get that more and more with these huge conglomerates and what you can say and what you can't say, and you know, reporting on them. I mean. It's so hard, you know, corporations, Christ, it's like you, you depend on a whistleblower basically because there's no other way in. You know, there's so many PR people and lawyers, you'll be out lawyered, you know, in two seconds if you try and do something critical about a, a conglomerate. You know, and then they start to control, you know, you know, who can say what on what level, you know, and kind of, I mean, when we were trying to make this film, trying to get it funded was, was tricky. You know, we had uh, meetings with people who were in different or rival corporations to Fox, and they they decided not to do it because they didn't want to rock the boat. You know, they had sufficiently shared, you know, relationships with 
people with, you know, Roger's legal team, you know, that they thought, oh, it might kind of compromise uh, compromise our legal team or something, you know, you know, balls the size of acorns. Yeah, and, and you know, looking back at, at, you know, his influence over the years, uh, you know, without Roger Ailes and, you know, the Fox News machine that was created, uh, you know, by him and around him, uh, what do you think 2018 looks like? Do you think do you think it looks any different, any better, or maybe yeah. was this path we're on maybe inevitable in some way? And Roger a Ailes would just kind of filled that role at the time. Uh, I mean, listen, you know, I mean, if you mean Donald Trump, then you know, <laughs> yeah, I mean. <sighs> these currents have been, you know, propelling us in this direction for a while, you know, and there's been a kind of marginalized group of voters in the middle of America who have been getting progressively more disenfranchised and more frustrated. And Roger has capitalized on their, you know, potentially, you know, legitimate frustrations in a way that nobody else did, and he and he made it outrage, you know, and he created outrage TV and, and it has harnessed it. Um, you know, was your question like if he hadn't died, or was your question if he'd never existed? It, more like if he'd never uh, existed. existed. Like if, if that, if you know, take him yeah. out of the equation entirely, what kind of world do we live in? I don't know. I don't know. Oh, I don't know. He was kind of a genius, you know. He did do something that nobody else had thought you know had done in that he 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 was unique in kind of harnessing the fear of a group of americans and making it so insanely profitable you know and kind of whipping it up so in part of my brain says no we would have lived in a very different world actually legitimately he was that important because he was from the midwest and he had this political career where he knew every state and every city and every county and kind of had an intimate sense of america and it took someone like that who could take all this political kind of knowledge and and say this is an underserved audience and we're going to serve them this way and another part of my brain that says you know somebody eventually would have capitalized on this and and by the way there was talk radio like rush limbaugh and all of those people who were doing really well and somebody would have made that television at some point so i don't know there's arguments both ways you know he took this kind of like crazy invective of talk radio and put it on tv and put it in short skirts and was like people the only thing standing between you and the apocalypse are these hot young ladies in tight dresses and these old white dudes and that was catnip you know anyway. uh, yeah in, in the film you you interview uh, a lot of people former uh, uh fox news personalities uh, uh some of his mm -hmm. accusers uh journalists uh you know, who, who was the most interesting, revealing kind of person you got to talk to for the film? That's hard. Uh, they're all interesting. I mean, I don't mean to like, you know, dodge the answer because they're all diff they're all interesting in different ways. I honestly find everyone fascinating. I mean, there was, you know, there was there were a couple of people who didn't make it into the film, uh, you know, who were interesting off camera and then for whatever reason either couldn't disclose you know, stuff that they'd said off off the record or, you know, they didn't make it into the film for various reasons. But, I mean, there were lots of people. Glenn Beck, fascinating for certain reasons. You know, he's Glenn Beck and he's kind of, he was like a one-man hate machine and now he's had a kind of mea culpa. Alison Camarota, you know, wonderful, articulate, so smart, so clear-sighted. You know, and I'd seen her on television and seen her on television like on CNN in the morning and not known her history at Fox. She was amazing. Um, you know, Austin could have, Pendleton could have talked to him all day. He's just kind and, you know, uh, thoughtful and, you know, perceptive about, about the humanity of it all. Uh, so everyone, everyone is interesting. That's why I really love my job. And uh, yeah, with a film about someone whose influence was so vast, you know, you probably could have talked to five thousand other people. Uh, you know, made a whole 
other couple of movies out of it. Was there anyone who you particularly would have liked to talk to who maybe yes. you couldn't talk to or like? Yes, yes. Judy Laterza, his assistant, who was his assistant from back in the 80s. And uh, I find her fascinating and her story, you know, she knows everything about Roger. She was his sort of amanuensis, you know, took notes, was there for all the meetings, you know, was the closest to him for the longest period of time. And she, she has not spoken publicly to anyone. So Judy, you know, if you ever want to talk, I, I would definitely want to talk to you. <laughs> and I'm sure uh, any number of publishers want to talk to her as well. Uh, <laughs> she, 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 but obviously it's better talking to me. Oh, of course. Talk, talk to them. Talk Andrew to, Riley. No, 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 no. You know, but you know, I'm, I'm her agent now. So like we're just, you know, she- Okay, good. Get the book deal, get the documentary yeah, film yeah, deal, yeah. Get, every, get everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, what's interesting, uh, you know, making a film like this, um, you know, the, the world, the media world is so uh, polarized and so, you know, uh, you, you, everyone can get their own information where they want it, you know? Right. So like, what, what would you hope uh, someone who maybe would be a Fox News viewer, um, like if they were to watch this film with an open it's, mind, it's what, what do you hope mean. they would take from it? I mean, I don't know what they would take from it. But, you know, we really, we really try to make it for that, those people. Like we, I, you know, there are a lot of Republicans interviewed in this film. You know, it, it, it's not a political film. We resisted the urge to interview people who came a cropper, you know, with him, you know, during the, the years of Obama, like, you know, Valerie Jarrett or David Axelrod or people who could have given us great anecdotes about what it was like to come, you know, to bash against Fox, like, or kind of liberal superstars. We, we, we didn't do that. You know, we, I, you know, the, the women who were sexually harassed, you know, Republicans, um, you know, his great friends on camera. And I, and I really tried, we really tried to make it for kind of, you know, non, non-political, you know, it's, a, it's, it's about, it's about morality. It's about what's right and what's not right. And what, what moves us all forward. It's not about politics, you know, and I'm foreign. So, you know, it, it, I didn't come into it with the same kind of um, allegiances, I would say, you know. And what's it like, come, you know, viewing uh, like this American political and media system from that kind of outside perspective? Because Americans yeah. grow up in it and it's hard yeah. to kind of see it clearly. I don't know. I mean, ask Trevor Noah, you know, you know, uh, it's it's fascinating. You know, it's the world that we've chosen. You know, I, I, I love America. I chose to live here, you know, um, and people have said to me on this film, like they, they have not people have set, said, you know, are you American? You know, like and not wanted to talk to me because I wasn't. You know, it, it's very, it's been fascinating in terms of understanding what patriotism means to different people, because Roger called himself a patriot first and foremost. Um, you know, I don't know. It's been, it's been fascinating. It's, it's forced me to, to, to wrestle with the idea of what is an American, but I'm firmly committed to American ideals. I have two American children. I live with an American man, you know, and I've chosen to build my life here. And, you know, coming from South Africa, you know, you know we've been through some tough times so like i'm i'm not moving you know even though this current administration is not what i would have chosen by any means you know i feel like you have to you have to engage 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 you know and not lose your 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 dignity you know and i try to make this film kind of respectful in a way you know that they are friends of rogers who have seen it and some some properly conservative people who've seen it, who I was very nervous about showing the film to in DC, and they were okay with it, you know, and that's, that means something to me because, you know, we didn't want to take the cheap shot. I mean, I don't think he comes out well, and I hope he doesn't because he was like a right shit bag at the end. Um, but, you know, I, I hope that we, you know, were, you know, careful with our facts and everything, you know, I stand by everything in the movie and that, you know, we afforded him the dignity of kind of, you know, expressing himself, you know, anyway. 
Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I want to uh, congratulate you on the film, um, and 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 thank you so much for for talking with me uh, about it. Uh, it's, it. It's fascinating at the very least. Tell your mates, go out and see it. Thank Absolutely you. will. All right. <laughs>